We didn't know until she was born that she has Down syndrome. I think it was just, at the beginning, an overwhelming feeling of fear, mostly because it was something that was unknown to us. I had a picture in my mind, you know, when we were pregnant, planning and, and imagining for our family of four. And when she finally came and we were told, for me it was just what I thought it was going to be and what reality was at the time and the struggle to accept that difference. The doctors warned us that she was likely to have a period of stay in the NICU. It all happened very fast from the delivery to the time that, you know, she started having complications. So within a few hours, her blood sugar level had dropped significantly. They had to try and put an IV in and then having to put a feeding tube through her nose so that she can get some nutrition in. We ended up being there for, you know, over two weeks. It was the biggest surprise, the biggest shock of our lives and, and I probably had a harder time accepting than Sean did. He really surprised me in accepting and adjusting and comforting me. I was pretty scared about the whole thing, not having been exposed to Down syndrome that much growing up. But at the same time, uh, it was also a happy day when we all got to be together for the first time. Some of the best advice I ever got when she was first born was uh, don't overthink things. Don't think too far down the line. Like, take it day by day. Don't let your worries overcome your enjoyment of your children, obviously, right? So Once I started, you know, looking through social media and connecting with other families who have um, kids with Down syndrome, seeing how happy they are to have a child with special needs and, and how much unexpected joy and, and new experiences that their child has brought them. It started giving me a little bit more confidence and, and comfort. It started off obviously just me posting pictures because I like to take pictures. After Emily was born and we found out that she has Down syndrome, I wanted to continue posting pictures as, as I had been. I made it a point to try and be as transparent as realistically possible, I guess, with the hopes that if anyone else who had just received a diagnosis just happened to, to find my page, I wanted to, to show them that, you know, we're a regular family um, who just happens to be blessed, really, with, with an extra chromosome. Papa. 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 From the very beginning, she was, she was my daughter. She was our daughter, and we felt connected to her, and we wanted to do everything that we could possibly do for her. Maya. We have a physiotherapist, we have a speech and language therapist, we have a developmental therapist, we have an occupational therapist. It keeps us very busy, but we're also extremely fortunate to have the, the support and the resources that we do. We're all working together with the same goal in mind, which is for Emily to, to be able to reach her her highest potentials. So we're here at Variety Village for Emily's physiotherapy and she comes here about once or twice a month right now. One foot up. Ready? 
one foot up. Nice. Kids with Down syndrome have low tone. They have less muscle strength than an average person. Oh, are you going to bring the ball to Stephanie? As you can see, it's a very um, task-oriented play. And for kids, the task is play. Ready, put that other hand up. Nice work. Good job. One more. One more. Yay! We're up. We're up. Are you up tall? Ready? Step up. Good. And then one leg over. Ready? One. Yes. Good job, sweetie. I'm always using a game or a toy to motivate her to accomplish the goal. Just getting in and out is a gross motor activity in itself for her to be able to step up onto the step and then climb over as opposed to just diving in head forward. It's also a sensory activity as well as a fine motor activity and you know we like to practice throwing. How oh, are you throwing the balls? Throwing. Ready? Roly poly, roly poly. So we're at Surrey Place today and we're here for speech and language therapy for Emily. We work on her speech and language and communications as well as using sign language. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. Then the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. You did it! We did some music! We want to build language into routines and that's how everybody learns language. Do you want more music? Nice job, the combination, beautiful. All right, well, let's pick another one. You want more music. With Down syndrome, we sort of are aware that there may be some developmental and language delays. So what we want to do is use early language ah. strategies to really boost language learning. So there is an association with low muscle tone in people with Down syndrome, so often speech sounds can be difficult to make. You may see kids with Down syndrome use signs before they use speech because the visual aspect of signs and the motor aspect of using your hands comes a little more easily than using the articulators, uh, tongue, lips. Because my first language is, is Japanese, I only speak to her in Japanese, at home and anywhere really. It was a big worry for me whether she would be able to understand and be bilingual. There's no evidence in the literature that shows for children with Down syndrome that being exposed to more than one language is a detriment to them. So they are often able to become bilingual individuals. Bye bye Emily, we'll see you again real soon. I never expected myself to be a mom of two girls. Maya, I think she was born to be a big sister. She's very responsible. She's always been very patient with Emily. And me being, you know, preoccupied a lot of the time with Emily, there was a lot of sacrifices that she had to make, but she was very understanding through it all. We've always been open with her about her sister's Down syndrome diagnosis. You know, it's a five-year-old's understanding of what it means, but what brings me the most joy about it is that she's proud to share it with people she meets for the first time. Just what you want to do. Something special. I'm so glad that their relationship is developing the way that it is. Yeah, they have this natural love for each other. It's interesting to see. It's very uh, unique and special. Yeah. The word that comes to mind is magical. Since she's come, it's put into perspective for us. What does happiness mean? 
how strong are we as a family, how strong is their sibling bond. Yes, she has Down syndrome, but so what, look at her, she's any other two-year-old. She's just as stubborn, she's just as active, she's just as loud. A Down syndrome diagnosis sounds scary, but it's really not. You'll have a happy life. We play soccer sometimes. Like going in the backyard like we were doing today. When I'm washing dishes, I'll usually like turn on the music and play a random playlist. Sometimes it's Disney music, sometimes it's stuff I like to listen to. We have impromptu dance parties all the time. Yeah. Thank you. I think my idea of happy and happy family looked a bit different to before Emily came and now that she's here and, and you know, yes, she has some needs that are different than, you know, a, a typical child. That doesn't mean that her, her life isn't fulfilling. That doesn't mean that, you know, she isn't happy or that we aren't happy. And, and in fact, you know, since she's come, we're infinitely happier than we were before. We couldn't be more blessed, really.